Because I am curious, you know, building factories yourselves, building all the componentry, everything yourself, why, why take that approach? Yeah, because I think in FMCG you need all the, the levers. Right. It's, it's generally speaking a scale game and you need the margin to have all the levers to either promote or heavily market. So above the line, below the line. So in order to truly compete, say in diapers with Kimberly Clark and Procter & Gamble, I think Procter & Gamble do was it $14 billion a year US in just their Pampers brand. It's their second biggest brand after Tide and Gain. And so they have huge scale and you, you have to make a diaper for us for, you know, cents. It's literally a matter of cents and then you have to make it at a way better spec and quality yep. across GSM of Top Sheet, SAP, all the specs basically we have to make better. And so to do that, you need real scale and then the payback for us on building factories and automating them and building efficiency when you're selling, like literally we do billions of diapers yep. at, or nappies a year. Yep. And so the payback is relatively quick, and then we focus relentlessly on being the most, building the most efficient factories in the world. So how do we build all the AGVs to take componentry around? How do we literally look at every part of the supply chain as well and go really deep into the supply chain and work out how we optimize that um, as well? So I think it's our biggest core competitive advantage. We've done that in toys, and it's allowed us to be highly disruptive. Yeah. For example, we ship about 48 million dart and water blasters a year globally. And we've overtaken Nerf, which is from Hasbro and market share in a lot of countries in the world. Yeah. And I was looking at MPD data just on water blasters um, last week and we have, I think, eight of the top 10 in the US and Super Soaker, their first one comes at maybe number 13. Right. But we now build with our automation 2.0, we build a dart blaster from plastic granule to in packaging without people. It's completely automated. Wow. Whereas Hasbro still outsources to factories like early light or Jetta and they're still you know producing on 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 by hand on production lines so we can bring both innovation and then we just bring huge efficiency on the manufacturing side and then we can be highly disruptive from a price point yeah. in the market but also it gives us all those other levers from a marketing standpoint as well so we're taking that same approach that we've done in toys that's worked so well and we're taking it into these other in many in many cases bigger categories um, and we experiment first. We don't like just build a factory straight away. In most cases, we have done on things like laundry. We've yeah. just gone deep and we've built um, our whole laundry factory from the ground up. But normally we'd, we'd outsource, like we'd in the beauty. Once we work out how to win it in the business, then we go really deep with, with building the factory. Yeah, I was going to say, that approach, you must make quite a few mistakes along the way or run into... I think so, things. but I think the main thing is as long as you have a continuous learning and a continuous improvement mindset. Yeah. And so oftentimes it's harder in the short term, but over the long term, it always pays off for us. Yeah. So most of our competitors and toys wouldn't go and build their own animation studio from the ground up. They work with animation studios. We just have a different approach and we think the continuous learning and the continuous improvement approach through that really works for us. You know, even on edge, we make thousands, I think it's tens of thousands actually bits of content a year. And by building all that content, digital and data team in house, there's this loop of learning and continuous improvement all of the time and we're keeping all of that sort of IP internal. Mm -hmm. And it just allows us to be agile, to move fast, to take feedback, to have no bureaucracy, to make decisions, to move quickly. Yeah. And and that's always been the beauty I think of Zuru. We we just like we move really fast. We fast fail. Yep. We try things. Yep. We move on if it doesn't work or we, we go really heavy behind things when it does work. And and that approach has always served us well. And we we're then able to you know, our operating costs versus our competitors are just a tiny fraction. Um, we run in like the 8 to 10% operating costs. Our competitors are like in the 40% in, in toys. Wow. And it's a huge competitive advantage how we run our business in a very lean, optimized way um, yeah. from start to finish, mm -hmm. from factory to retailer. Mm -hmm. um, we don't really do any D to C. We are very much using the scale of retail, the scale of building our factories, and then automating production, and then the scale of digital data from a, from a marketing standpoint. We keep a lot of that marketing side really central, centralized yeah. and, and lean because we can now roll it out globally from a central location. So just we always think about our business uh, in terms of you know how we can optimize everything. Are you sort of settled now on the verticals, the categories, or is there more out there that you want to? I think I think I'm pretty settled. Like there's, it's a lot as yeah. it is, yeah. um, and then of course we have housing, um, yeah. <laughs> which yeah. is on the other side. Yeah, and so we've got three pretty big chunky yeah. businesses within Zuru Group, and that's not to say we're not going to fire bullets in other little areas just to see, mm -hmm. but 
there'll be less bullets because we have so many bullets that we're firing within those verticals now. I yeah. think in pet food, we have something like 50 projects in development. It's a lot, yeah. a lot. Yeah. Uh, I think in beauty, we have maybe 14 or 15 brands in development and launching over the next 24 months. And, you know, again, we started with that experiment, Monday Hair Care, that one brand will do 200 million at wholesale this year, close to 350 million at retail. Yeah. Um, it's the second, it's two years in a row now, number two growth driving in all of hair care in the US. Yep. And so once we kind of learn what works, it's like, okay, how do we go deeper? How do we build more? How do we take those learnings? And we still get it wrong on some of the new brands we've launched or some brands in the past we've definitely got it wrong and failed. Sure. And we'll continue to do that. Um, and that's part of the process. Correct, that's definitely like part of the process. Okay. How is the housing stuff going? Amazing. It's, I think what people don't necessarily understand is like the magnitude and scale of one, the problem we're trying to solve and two, like how we're trying to solve it Yeah. and why no one in the world is doing anything even close, close to, to, it. Yeah. To, to, to it. I'm trying to think how Marcel, who leads part of the project, was explaining it to me the other day, but it's, it is wildly complex what we're trying to achieve. And we initially built the factory in one fifth scale. Mm-hmm and the software, so whatever you design in the software, the factory makes. Yep. There's 16 modules, so the wall module, the rebar module, the window module, the lattice module, et cetera, et cetera, mm-hmm. the tile module, and each of those modules is revolutionary and innovative. And we built that factory in one-fifth scale, then once that's working, we scaled up, we built a test factory, which is about 2.7 hectares, so it's one production line. Okay, yeah. And then from there, we, uh, about a year ago, we purchased a factory in China, which is 25 acres of just building alone. And so to give you a sense of scale, and that is gonna be the first production factory. And so we're building that at the moment. And we're now building test houses in China, okay. so, yeah. which are, are really great and are at a small fraction of the cost. And we have bought four bits of land in LA and we're building and shipping our first test houses that we're actually shipping from China um, this year. So the first one should be completed by the end of this year or early next year. And so proof of concept is, is, is come pretty far. Um, but again, we've really built something that the quality is better than anything that exists in the world at a tiny, tiny fraction of the cost. For more content just like this and all the latest business and political news, head over to mbr.co.nz.